Well, I think by now you probably have a way too much information about what a hot mess I was most of my adult life, trying to do everything for others and never really allowing myself to experience the generosity of my own love and my own actions. So let's look at this three-step process. This three-step, the three things you need from a spiritual perspective that will enhance any medical treatment you're receiving are you need a champion, you need a process, and you need displayable skills. A champion, a process, and displayable skills. I call this process the Zen results method. The Zen results method. It's a simple way to start taking charge and allowing yourself to create a life you want. The first champion in my life of, of consequence was my wife, Amy, and she's still here. She loves me unconditionally, and it was inside of her love and constant reminder that I help others, and I contribute so much to others, and her tolerance of my depression and anxiety and inaction and inability to, to help myself that allowed me to see that I was lovable. The next person, the next champion I have is my friend Carl. Same thing. He, he's, a, he's truly a person who wants me to succeed and be well. He's accepted my contributions and his contribution to me was not to give up, that uh, I was totally hopeless. And then the third group of champions are those who have supported my ministry and my waffling back and forth over the years since I've been ordained, since I was ordained in 2014. So I had these three types of of champions that reminded me that my contributions were significant and patiently waited and loved me until I saw for myself that my own self-value and my self-worth. So your, your action now is to take an inventory of the people in your life. Who's there? Who's been there? Who will always be there? To support you and love you exactly the way you are and exactly the way you're not. Who's pulling for you to succeed. That's pulling for you to find that happiness. To have your eyes light up. To be joyful. To start taking control. I realize that some may not have that group. Some may not have those champions at their fingertips. So consider finding a meetup group, finding a local community, finding something you love to do to connect with, to start to create a group of champions, a group of people who you can be yourself with, contributing and doing what you love doing. Mine was my spiritualist ministry and my, my spiritual growth and teaching allowed me to, to deal with who I was and see that I was able to help others until I was ready to help myself. If you can't find one, you're welcome to join ours. Ours is called the Old Soul Academy, Old Soul Academy. And there's a group on Facebook, or you can go to the website and we're creating a community there also. The website is oldsoul.academy, oldsoul.academy. Or if you're on Facebook, just search for Old Soul Academy and request an invitation in. There are some rules of engagement, uh, but we accept you exactly the way you are and create a safe, quiet, loving space for you to begin to build a community of champions who will be there for you and are pulling for you to start taking charge. The second thing you need is a process. The process is quite simple, but as with most simple things, not at all easy. So the process is right meditation, right thought, right action. Right meditation, right thought, right action. A quick warning for other perfectionists out there, don't get caught up in the word right. Uh, for most of my 30 years of meditating, I got, I really tried to produce right meditation, which means perfect meditation. And Meditation isn't about perfectionism. Meditation is about doing the work, sitting in the practice, being there now, doing what it is that meditation is doing, which is observing your thoughts and minds and developing the ability to not attach and run with them. So that's what meditation is. 
the practice of meditation is the practice. By sitting in practice, that is right meditation. So being a perfectionist who is trained as an engineer, what I've come to understand is right meditation is right now meditation. Right now, right now, right now. The best meditation I can produce right now is, perf is a perfectly right meditation. So right meditation, right thought, right action is simply right now, what's the meditation I can produce? Right now, what's the best thought I can produce? Right now, what's the best action I can take? So that's the process. Right meditation, right thought, right action. We call those the three R's. As I mentioned, right meditation is the first step. And that's how I self-medicated myself all over the years. I would do my meditation. It would relieve the stress on these abscesses of my soul. And I would get along. Right meditation is the beginning. But it's not the end. There's two other parts. And I had fallen into the habit of using meditation as self-medication to relieve the symptoms I was experiencing of depression and anxiety, to have these moments of powerfully starting things, but never really bringing them to fruition or allowing them to complete. So after you meditate and you start to become clear about what's going on around you, the right thought process is the next area. And right thought simply delivers an actionable decision, which then you take action on. And that's the part that had eluded me as I was doing all the right things, but for the wrong reasons, trying to prove I had common sense and that I could get all this stuff done, but I never really accepted and loved who I was. Right meditation is stillness meditation. I'll leave a link to my stillness meditation video. Right thought is brought about by journaling. Journaling. Allowing yourself to get out of your head and into existence in the three-dimensional real world. What's going on within you? The beginning focus of your journaling and right thought is answering three questions. Three questions. And those three questions, once you get an answer to, will create a context for your right actions and allow you to start to move through the inability to get things done. So the three questions are, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Until you have answers to all three of those questions. And I will put a little footnote in right here that you don't need the right answer to those questions. You need a provisional answer. You need an answer right now that feels right. And that feels right is really subjective. Right now, at this moment in time, this feels right. This is who I am. This is where I'm going. This is where, um, this is why I'm here. Until you get those three answers, you end up with a stool that's wobbly. If you have two of the three, you're kind of wobbly. If you have one of the three, you're very wobbly. Well, you're kind of, kind of lopsided while you're sitting there. But it's getting those three answers, even provisionally, that allow you to create a context for the direction of your life. I got my three answers in 1991. I knew in 1991 exactly that I would be here talking to you someday in a video about how to start taking charge of your depression to create the life you want. It's taken me that many years to bring it to fruition because I was missing the pieces of my development in the areas of right thought and right action. Now, I know this may seem to some of you very, uh, not very inspirational, not very motivational, but here's the thing I really want you to understand and comprehend. We incarnated here to learn something and do something. And in so doing, we chose parents we felt would bring that about for us. Our level of spiritual awareness makes easier the choices of who we should select as parents. For whatever reason, I chose parents who on both sides of the genetic equation were prone to depression, prone to anxiety. And it was this choice 
that trained me as a young person to experience life a specific and certain way. So I won't know until I get over there, like over there on the other side, why I chose that and if I did well or if it was a grand mistake or something changed. I won't know that until there. But what I do know is, is right now is over the last three decades, I've helped a lot of people learn to meditate, learn to start thinking properly and create a life that worked for them. And by all accounts, my life has worked from the outside, but from the inside, it didn't. So that's what we're talking about here is that deep inner abscess of my soul that kept me from enjoying life because most so much of my energy was devoted to healing these things. And I was trying to do that strictly through meditation and not understanding karma's role in creating and training this beast, this physical body to be the vehicle for why I came here.